5.5, the trapezoidal rule. Your objective for this lesson is to apply the trapezoidal rule. Okay, so the trapezoidal rule, we've looked before um, at different Riemann sums, which were a way to approximate the value of an integral. Well, another way to approximate the value of an integral is with the trapezoidal rule. So you can see to approximate this integral, you can use the following formula t equals h divided by 2 times y sub 0 plus 2y sub 1 plus 2y sub 2 all the way up until you get to y sub n where a comma b is partitioned into n sub intervals of equal length so you have a and b from your integral um, and the sub intervals are h equals Oh, this should be an n. Um, H equals b minus a divided by n. So the length of the interval divided by the number of intervals that you want. That is what h is. Example one, use the trapezoidal rule with n equals four to estimate the integral um, from one to two of x squared dx. Compare the estimate with the value um, that you calculate in your calculator and with the exact value. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do to use the trapezoidal rule is partition this interval, 1, 2, into four subintervals. So h equals... 2 minus 1 over 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. Divided by 4, we get 1 fourth. So each interval will be 1 fourth. Now we're going to plug into the trapezoidal rule. So t equals r h, so 1 fourth, divided by 2 parentheses, we have y sub 0, so y sub 0, plus 2y sub 1, plus 2y sub 3, plus y sub 4. Okay, and you might be asking yourself, well, where do the y's come from? Um, well, you have to actually evaluate the function and figure out what the y's are. And notice that um, each of these you're multiplying by 2 except for the first and last ones. So the first and last one leave y by itself, but everything in the middle you're going to multiply by 2. So let's figure out what our y's are so we can actually plug into this. If I start at 1, I'm going to evaluate this function at 1. So when x equals 1, I have 1 squared, which is 1. Then I'm going to add a fourth to this. So I'm going to write this as 1.25 because 1 fourth is 0.25. And I have 1.25 squared, which is 1.56 and then I'm going to add one quarter to this, or 0.25. So I have x is 0.5, 1.5, sorry. 1.5 squared is 2.25. Add a fourth to this, square it. 3.0625 and my last part of my interval x is 2, 2 squared is 4. Okay, so I now have my, oh I skipped one here, I skipped 2y sub 2. Hmm. Let me fix that real quick. Um, Okay, so now I have my 
y sub 1 or y sub 0, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, and y sub 4 that are going to get plugged into here. And I'm going to slide this stuff down so I can just plug it in right underneath. Um, so I have 1 fourth divided by 2 times 1 plus 2 times 1.5625 plus 2 times 2.25 plus 2 times 3.0625 plus 4. Okay. Now I'm going to simplify this mess. So 1 fourth divided by 2 is 1 eighth. And we have a lot of stuff in here. Let's pull out the calculator because I don't feel like crunching all these numbers right now. Okay. So we have 1 plus 2 times 1.5625 plus 2 times 2.25 plus 2 times 3. Point oh six five plus four. Okay, so I have eighteen point seven five in my parentheses. <clears throat> and one eighth of of eighteen point seven five. So this divided by eight is two. Point three four three seven five. That is a pretty long decimal. Okay, so this is what we get using the trapezoidal rule. This is our approximation. But we need to compare this to the value that we get by using numerical integration in the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go to math number nine. Type in your function, which was x squared, comma, x, comma, our lower bound was 1, and our upper bound was 2. Okay, so numerical integration gives me 2.333. So I'm going to write nint equals 2.3 repeating okay and now finally let's actually find the exact value of the integral so move this stuff again we are integrating from 1 to 2, x squared dx. And I know that my antiderivative is 1 third x cubed. So I want to say 1 third of 2 cubed minus 1 third of 1 cubed. I know that 2 cubed is 8, divided by 3 is 8 thirds, 1 cubed is 1, times 1 third I get 1 third, and this gives me 7 thirds. So 7 thirds is my exact value of the integral, which I believe is the same as the decimal we just got. Yeah, so that's the same as the decimal we just got in the calculator. Um, the trapezoidal approximation is very close to that. You can see it's less than a tenth off. It's 
from the actual value of the integral. Um, so this is really, this is a much better approximation than what you would get by using left or right Riemann sums. So it is important to know that your trapezoidal approximation always overestimates the integral where the graph is concave down and underestimates where the graph is concave up. So if I have a graph that's concave down, it's like this, and I'm drawing little trapezoids under here. So, like this. Okay, so this isn't really good, but you can see the corners are on the curve, the corners of the trapezoids. And there are little tiny tidbits here that are left out between the curve and my trapezoid. So that's where it's underestimating. As opposed to if I have this curve here, this is concave up. I'm going to draw my trapezoids again. You can see that I'm including little bits that aren't actually in the graph. So this is my overestimation, underestimation. Example two, an observer measures the outside temperature every hour from noon until midnight, recording the temperatures in the following table. What is the average temperature for the 12 hour period? Okay, so first of all, let's bring this back. Our average value of a continuous function, so average, is equal to 1 over b minus a times integral from a to b f of x dx. But we don't have an f of x, we just have a table. So this is where it's a good idea to use your trapezoidal rule because we don't have a function that we can integrate. And you can see this table has already divided our our um, temperature readings into 12 subintervals where they're each one hour apart. So we have 12 equal subintervals. So I'm going to say H equals, if I end at 12, start at time 0, over 12, 1, okay? Um, which you could have just seen basically by counting. And now I'm going to plug in to the trapezoidal rule. So T equals H is 1 divided by 2 times Y sub 0 is 63 plus 2 times next number 65 plus 2 times 66, plus 2 times 68. And this is going to get pretty long, so I'm just going to write some dot, dot, dots. We're going to put this in the calculator. Um, but really, at the end here, you're going to have 2 times 58 plus 55. Okay, so putting this into the calculator. Really, I should just scroll up so I can see the table. Okay, here we go. So, 0.5, I'm going to clear this out first, times 63 plus 2 times 65 plus 2 times 66 plus 2 times 68 plus 2 times 70 plus 2 times 69 plus 2 times 68 plus 2 times 68 plus 2 times 65 plus 2 times 64 plus 2 times 
62 plus 2 times 58 plus just 55. No 2 times there. Okay. Enter. And I get 782 for my T. Okay. And this is equal to, so this part is equal to this integral right here. Or not equal to, but it's approximately equal to that integral. So now I can find the average because I know what B and A are. I know where my temperature reading stopped and started. So I can plug that in. I have 1 over 12 minus 0 times, I said that's 782. And this gives me 65.17. Okay. And really, though, I'm going to write here 65 degrees because I want to be consistent with my other temperature readings. None of those had a decimal, so I'm going to say just 65 degrees. Okay, next we have Simpson's rule. To approximate this integral, we're going to use Simpson's rule, which is written here, where a comma b is partitioned into an even number of subintervals of equal length. And you can see h is defined again as b minus a divided by n. And this will be our last problem that we're doing. Example 3. Use Simpson's rule with n equals 4 to approximate the integral from 0 to 2 um, of 5x to the fourth dx. <clears throat> oh, and really this part doesn't need to be written here. Okay, so Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is partition our interval, which is 0 comma 2. Again, getting that from the bounds on the integral into four subintervals. So h equals 2 minus 0 divided by 4, which equals 1 half. Okay. And now I know s equals h over, not 2, over 3 times y sub 0 plus 4y sub 1 plus 2y sub 2 plus 4y sub 3 plus y sub 4. <clears throat> okay. So I know that h is 1 half. And just like before we were using the trapezoidal rule, I need to find my different y values. So when x is 0, I'm going to have 5 times 0 to the 4th is 0, so this is y sub 0, put that there, plus 4 times, okay, so add a half to this, so x is 1 half, so we have 5 times 1 half to the 4th, which is 5 times 1 over 16. So we have 5 sixteenths. So 4 times 5 sixteenths plus 2 times, okay, so next x is 1. So we have 5 times 1 to the 4th, which equals 5, so 2 times 5, plus 4 times, let me move this part out of the way, the next number we're going to plug in for x is 1.5. So 5 times, and really that's 3 halves to the 4th, is 5 times 3 to the 4th is 81 over 16. So that is 405 sixteenths plus next x is 2, 5 times 2 to the 4th 
is 5 times 16, which is 80. Okay, <clears throat> so I filled in this part here, and all I need to do now is put, put this into my calculator and see what happens. So I have 0.5 over 3, not 6, 3 times parentheses, <clears throat> 0 plus 4 times 5 sixteenths plus 2 times 5 plus 4 times 405 sixteenths plus 80. And I get 32.083 repeating. If I wanted this as a fraction, as you all know I like fractions, can hit math, enter, enter, get 385 over 12. So that would be the same thing. Okay, um, if I wanted to compare this to the exact value of the integral, The antiderivative of this is x to the fifth. So I'm going to evaluate 2 to the fifth minus 0 to the fifth. 2 to the fifth is 32 minus 0. We get just 32. So you can see that this is, again, a very, very close approximation. It's much better than the left and right hand Riemann sums. Um, but that is it for 5.5. .5.